I'm Sage, and I'm about to have the perfect day at Universal Studios. Actually, I'm Sage, and I'm about to have the perfect day at Universal Studios. As what? What is? What is happening? It's I... your perfect day. Uh... Now before we get into the chaos that is my perfect day, definitely scan this QR code. The Allers team and I have been working super hard on crafting our perfect days for you, and we would love for you to be able to come on my perfect day to Universal Orlando Resort. You know, the perfect day, the sage way. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what are you waiting for? Go check it out. Coffee acquired, uh, breakfast sandwiches acquired, and we are standing outside of Islands of Adventure. It is... 7:24, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see in the back, there are, there's already uh, kind of a big crowd behind uh, the gates uh, before they're able to be let in at 8 o'clock. But for my perfect day, why Universal? Why Island of Adventure? Well, we do Disney World so much for our perfect days, and recently I became an annual pass holder. I've worked at uh, Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios since 2016 as an actual team member. Uh, actually, I, I take that back. I think 2011, 2012 is when I started. I was a tailor at Poseidon's Fury, which Poseidon's Fury is no uh, is no longer around. But that's how long uh, I've been with uh, I've been with the company. I'm, not, I'm no longer with the company, but uh, I, I know everything about them from a, from a, a team member standpoint, uh, from an employee standpoint. But it's exciting to come here as a guest and Islands of Adventure actually funny enough kind of uh, opened and, and came to be you know when I was a kid growing up and I used to have similar to how I had the Fantasmic CD and used to create action figures uh, and re recreate the the Fantasmic thing I had the Islands of Adventure uh, background music CD as well and uh, we would uh, you know we would put together fun plays in our, my garage using this music because it's so iconic doing something a little new doing something a little different so a uh, bunch of tips and tricks on how to op optimize your day here at Islands of Adventure Universal Studios and later we're gonna have an after party at City Walk because it's not a it's not a sage perfect day without a little bit of after party you know what I mean? you know what I mean let's go look who I found here we go here we go here we go. Uh, we are headed. We are rushing with nine thousand people. Um, yeah. Oh, with our best friends and nine thousand people uh, to what I assume everyone is going to Hagrid's magical creature Mag motorbike adventure. adventure. Yes. So uh, we have our Starbucks. We're probably going to finish our drinks and put uh, the We're snacks in a locker, it. and then I'll see what happens. So right now they are only preloading the queue uh, because. At park it's opening, it's down, uh, and they do not know when it's going to go up. We are gonna, we might as well give it a shot because it might go up at any second. Uh, typically, I would say Hagrid's does this often, um, <clears throat> just like uh, you know, comparing it to Disney Rise of the Resistance. How oftentimes that's always down the first thing in the morning, uh, typically because one, they're either still working on it, or two, they can't quite figure out the bugs, and then they open it maybe 20, 30. 40 minutes later, but uh, I'm cool to wait a little bit, especially because I have never done it before, which I'm very excited about. So it's now been 30 minutes and we've moved like four people, not because of the line moving, but because of families getting out of line. Leaving. Leaving. Uh, I think we've made a decision. I think we've decided to wait in line until all the families leave, which will put us at the front of the line. So even if it's 7 p.m., we're, we're here. We're here, baby. We're not really doing it. No, no, no. We're probably going to wait until, because we got this uh, hour basically of early entry, most uh, park guests did not get. So I think we're going to hang out until 9, and if it's still not open by 9, uh, we'll probably dip out and start doing other things because we have someone else showing up for my perfect day, and we want to make sure that um, this person is also... Yeah, we need to do stuff together. Together, as a family. Because it's our perfect day. Well... Planned by finish. But we're all together. It's, oh, it, okay, wait. <laughs> This is an amazing ride. Correct. It's my favorite ride here. Do not waste your whole day on it. This is not worth your entire ride ticket. Correct. Ticket. Yeah. So I think we are debating on if we hop out. All right. I this is where we would tell you to definitely get out. Get out of line. Get out of line. I would say, I think let's give it 15 more minutes. Okay. 9 30 is our cutoff. And then we are getting out. And then we are out. getting out. Because our friend's here. Our friend is here. And we've got other things to do. It's a perfect day. And honestly, it's been great chatting with you in line. It was a great start to my perfect day. I won't lie. I love getting in long lines. <laughs> For work, that sounds crazy. But it's like, we 
get to relax. We're having conversation. We had coffee and some we had snacks. Coffee. We had bre our whole breakfast in this line. Yes. So, I mean, worst things have happened. We had team members come up to us and say, hey, it's gonna be even way, way longer way than we anticipated. Long. He also said our goal was to be open at nine. Now it's going to be even later, so he actually encouraged us to leave. He actually said, we, we recommend you literally maybe coming back, uh, but write, literally write anything else but this, yeah. is what they said. That was verbatim their language, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Um, so the other big priority for me was uh, VelociCoaster. Uh, because it's one of my favorite coasters. So we're gonna head over there uh, and it's actually a 90 minute wait. It's kind of a, it's, it's a little bit of a busy day today, especially, but those two attractions are obviously gonna be the highest wait just because they're the most in demand. And we'll find out if maybe Velocicoaster has their single rider open. Yeah. They don't always, but there is one. So keep your eyes open for that. And so that's what we're gonna attempt. We're gonna attempt single rider, which typically is, uh, is faster than normal. All right, we've made it. This is Jurassic World Velocicoaster, the biggest and I think newest roller coaster here in Islands of Adventure. If you don't know what it is, it is themed to Jurassic World. So you're gonna see Bryce Dallas Howard, Chris Pratt, I guess Owen and Claire, if you know them that way. It's very, very exciting, super intense. And honestly, one of the most popular rides in this park behind Hagrid's. The first time I rode this attraction, I literally did not know what to do with my body. It was such yeah. an adrenaline rush, and I literally felt like I was going to fall out of this seat. Yeah. It was wild. Okay, top three roller coasters in the parks. Oh. <laughs> I would say it's Velocicoaster as crazy. I think I I think I put Velocicoaster as number one. Mm -hmm. Cosmic Rewind is number two. <gasps> and randomly, Mako from SeaWorld Orlando, which right now, Emma and Quincy are <laughs> which right now, Breedlove and Quincy are filming Breedlove's Perfect Day, and I think they even go to SeaWorld at the end of the day. That thing is wild. What a take. But um, top of the single rider line, Raptors. Let's get it. So this one, I, Velocicoaster is incredible, but not always my super favorite. If you guys don't know this about me, I'm not the biggest coaster person in the world, although this one is a lot of fun, but there are times that I just know we're gonna be here for a long day. Sometimes it'll give me a pretty bad headache, so I'm choosing not to ride it this morning. He told me to meet him in here. Um, not him, but looks pretty similar. So I'll keep looking. Found you. What a great ride. So good. It's a good one. Yeah, your hair is perfect. Thank I didn't want to mess it up, so this ride gives me headaches. I know, uh, but uh, I wanted to talk about the thing that we don't like always talk about, we don't want to show in here. I'm obsessed with the Discovery Center, <laughs> the Jurassic Park Discovery Center. Uh, we'll do this in a second. I love you, Bet Jurassic. It's like a fun game show you can play, but here is where you can literally um, I, I pretend as if you are uh, a scientist or a paleontologist, but you can uh, basically scan, x-ray some eggs, some potential dinosaur baby eggs. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got it this way. Got the egg. Insert it into the egg carrier, slide carrier into the scan. Oh, it's scanning. But there's a bunch of things you can do here. Sometimes there's even a little uh, demonstration where the, uh, uh, there's uh, a dinosaur egg hatches, which is super cool. You can do some DNA sequencing, some lockers in here. But I like, I like this, I like the game show. Come with me, Emma. So this is You Bet Jurassic, which is basically like a fun game show you can play in the Discovery Center. The creature least likely to be consumed by a Cretaceous era T-Rex is a Ceratops, a human being, another T-Rex, Patasaurus. Sage one. Oh, on that question alone, because we both got embarrassed at how bad we were doing. So check mark on that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this majestic hat. Hey, you know what's so funny about my perfect day? What? Um, that it's also my perfect day. So you want to do something weird? <laughs> I mean, want to, or am I gonna? Because it's your perfect day. We have to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, I wanted to pull them in, in here because it's been so long. Hi! It's been so long since I have done um, Cat in the Hat because it's a silly dark ride. Uh, it typically 
uh, has a really, really low weight because it's not super popular. And even some people find it creepy, but it is a, a dark ride that takes you through uh, the Cat in the Hat story by Dr. Seuss. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it definitely is a little more thrilling than I always anticipate because it spins quite a bit. But it's definitely older, definitely a little dated. Uh, and if you grew up with it like I did, it is pure nostalgia. I also have a personal connection with Cat in the Hat because uh, I've, I've played Cat in the Hat multiple times uh, in a variety of shows, so here we go. What, what is your personal connection to Cat in the Hat? I'll tell, I'll tell you and I'll show you after the ride is over. Okay. All right, we've stood here in the sun because we need to know about this connection. It better be really good. It's not. Oh. I played. The, I played. I, I played the Cat in the Hat three times in my life. Twice in Susical and once as Susical and once as just the Cat in the Hat in the regional theater. And if you can see. Oh my! No, that was worth it. You <laughs> look worth so it. silly. Yeah. I did the hat. It's the hat. well. He's it. He's the cat. And the I'm cat on a ball. I'm hat. standing on a ball. A ball? He's an That's actor. More like a platform. It's a bean bag. <laughs> I'm not an acrobat. Regional theaters make me do weird things sometimes. <laughs> it's a bean bag. <laughs> Let's go to Marvel. We have made it to Marvel Superhero Island. Now, if you're familiar with Marvel at all, you'll be like, whoa, wait a minute. Well, I thought Disney had Marvel. Well, actually, there is still a contract, a um, an agreement in place where anything... Oh, where anything east of the Mississippi River, uh, when it comes to Marvel, uh, they still own... Uh, Universal still owns Marvel, but west of the Mississippi River, that obviously belongs to Disney, which is why you don't see any Marvel characters uh, other than Guardians of the Galaxy, which you don't you, you don't see Guardians of the Galaxy here. Other than other than Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, you don't see any Marvel characters east of the Mississippi River. Uh, and I don't know how long that contract will uh, contract will last for. Uh, I can't imagine it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna go away anytime soon because it's a whole land dedicated to this. It's gonna be a huge build to redo this. So, um, in the meantime, we're going to enjoy. I think. What do you want to? What, what are we doing? Are we doing Hulk or Spider-Man? Well, Storm Force Accelerator is also super exciting. <laughs> uh, I highly recommend. I also love Spider-Man. What are the wait times like? Let's check. Sorry, I'm on a Miss Piggy T-shirt. <laughs> Unrelated. Unrelated. But. I did. I did have Powerline T-shirts for all of us, but when we changed it to Universal, then I said, "Nah." Storm Force is only five minutes. Oh my god! Go fast. It's gonna get crazy. You're right. <laughs> what are the other ones? <laughs> The Incredible Hulk coaster is a, a, a Hulk themed coaster with an incredible launch, uh, that hence the Incredible Hulk coaster. Before we do that, we're gonna have to put our stuff in the lockers. Now, a couple years ago, it did get an entire refurbished uh, situation. I haven't been here in the past 10 years. They've got a new ride vehicle. It's super sleek, super interesting, and uh, definitely uh, one of our must-dos when we're visiting Islands of Adventure. Okay, crew, so I am feeling fine right now, but I've not been feeling my best the last few days. It's just like sinusy, it's that allergy season. Them. And I just don't want to ride coasters today. I don't want to take away from Sage's perfect day though. So we are gonna hang out and I'm just gonna tell you like it's okay to be the person who maybe doesn't do all the coasters, doesn't do all the rides. This is I think a great time to find a spot, to chill, relax, maybe get a treat that you want that they don't care to do, or do those lower wait times that they don't really care about. But this is me encouraging you to do what you think is best. And also don't impact anybody else's day. Don't tell them, hey, you can't do it because I don't want to. But be confident in saying, hey, I don't really want to do this right now. You guys go have fun and we'll meet back up later. So we just got off Hulk, uh, thoughts and feelings. Love it. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of fun. It kind of rattles your head around, so be aware. But the launch is awesome, and it's it never fails. That's one of the ones, uh, one of the coasters that uh, a lot of blood rushes to your head, and it makes me like the the. You start to black out. You start to black out. Not like you're not gonna faint, but I start to black out a little bit. It's wild. Yeah. Uh, something. Wow, that's a good review. I know I want to hop on. <laughs> <laughs> and as promised, we're gonna do Storm Force and Yeah! Let's go. Storm Force Accelerator, my favorite <laughs> ride in Marvel, except I do love Spider-Man. This one is a lot of fun. If you've ever been to Dollywood, I compare it to the Scrambler a lot, but also it's like an extreme teacup. So you throw around and you spin and you shake and it's so much fun and it's a lot more intense than people would think. But I'm pumped! Yeah! Is this your alien swirling saucer? 
It is. Have you ever been to Dollywood? No. Then I can't tell you. You won't understand my comparison. <laughs> so never mind. All right. Fast or slow? Fast. I just asked it a question. Yeah! If you wanted, like, to chill about it. I think you're going to be surprised at how much it's like. <laughs> Honestly, the so most good. the most fun ride we've done today. Listen, <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. That was more intense than the whole. Yeah, it kind of was. I lost my earring. Oh, you want to tell you want to tell everybody why you wore your I'm cherry earrings? Cherry earrings because you put them in Manhattan, and that's his dream. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so cute. Well, not anymore. I lost the earring back. Yeah. What are you? But um, it was worth it. It was worth it for that. And what are you? And what are you? You know, like how are you paying a tribute to me today on my perfect day, right? Here. She flew in. She flew in. I, that's right, that's right. At the time of filming, uh, almost, I would say, like a third of uh, Toon Lagoon uh, is under construction. They're closed for scheduled maintenance. Well, we're moving on to, to Jurassic Park. I think we're going to skip the water ride today because it's, it's on the cooler side. So part of my perfect day is not waiting in any lines. Uh, we have to wait in some lines. I mean long lines. Okay, I was gonna say we just waited. Yeah, I just mean <laughs> long. Not on purpose, lines. though. Not, not on purpose. On purpose. Um, and and also, big thing, we did not because we don't recommend it. We did not get the Universal Express Pass because it is just so expensive. Yeah. Um, it's upwards of a hundred dollars. Uh, Plus some in the summers. And I will say, there's a lot of Universal resorts that if you're staying on property, it comes with your room. So if you really want it and you're doing a Universal only trip. Maybe consider staying on property. Quincy has done amazing room tours all about the Universal Room, so go check those out on the channel. But that means we're gonna do some things today that are a little bit off the beaten path, and uh, we're still gonna do a lot of big rides today, uh, but we're gonna be, we're gonna optimize, but uh, do things off the beaten path as well, like something fun and silly, Camp Jurassic. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Camp Jurassic is literally like a Jurassic Park Playground. There's different areas where uh, you where you can uh, walk over bridges over like these geysers. It reminds me a little bit of Tom Sawyer Island in a sense, where there are different things you can do, different forts you can play in. But yes, follow Fry's rules: no rock climbing, no running, no strollers, no bare feet, no smoking. If they had to put it on a sign, someone's done it before. That's kiddos, true. I think kiddos lose their shoes. Yeah, but also there is a water area where people are like, oh, let me put on my swimsuit, take out my, take out my shoes. No. This is this water. This is water. <laughs> I told you no water. Oh, no. Wait a minute. All right, you can, there's, there's a little war area back here where you can, wait a minute. I don't know who this little girl is, but yeah. <laughs> And they can get us back. Oh no, run! Where's Fry? Fry! So in, ad in addition to <laughs> in addition to uh, the the water area and all the bridges, there's also a net climbing thing that is basically for anybody. Why? Why don't you? I need to get on this firm ground. All right, here we go. We'll, we'll work together. Work together. Oh my goodness, now, now, and now, and now uh, we into the hole, Emma. <laughs> I'm taking the stairs. <laughs> you taking the stairs? All right, well, hold on, take, take this. Now I'll go down the hole. You want to go down the hole? I can. Yeah, Emma's going down the hole. In the hole. <laughs> Maybe we cut that part. All right, are you leading the way? Uh, yeah. All right, I'll follow you. Let's go. Let's get out of the dog. Okay. Well, Wait, you want to go together? Yeah. All right. It's not that bad. It's not hard. Guys, I'm really out of shape. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Help me. I was told there was a cave somewhere, and Emma has now made friends with a small child. She's just a small child. So we're gonna. I think it's that bridge. I think we're gonna find it. We're gonna.
We're gonna find the cave and then we'll go do more adult things. I think I found it. Shall we? Let's go. Oh. Spooky. So while Fry Bucket gets in line for her one request of the day, which was butter beer, uh, I'm gonna pop on over here to see the uh, Triwizard Tournament. The Triwizard Tournament is basically a showcase of two of the competing teams, uh, the Bobatons, who are the basically the dancers in blue, and the Durmstrang, who are the fighters in brown. They're the uh, with the with the bow staff. It's a super unique show uh, where you get to experience a little bit of the movies as if they're doing a presentation because obviously they're they're uh, both the, both the Bobatons and the Durmstrang they're not from around here, so they're uh, basically demonstrating their capabilities to show that they're gonna win the. Um, the Triwizard Cup. Now that Fry has her butter beer, which one did you get? Frozen. Frozen? Oh, wrong answer. Well, listen, uh, no, it's the right answer. My favorite is the hot, but it's not the right temperature. Oh. I also think frozen is the right answer. I know the it's no it's the cold. The cold is the right answer. What are you what are you even saying? The cold is the right answer. Ella, listen, let me know in the comments which butter beer you are. If you're hot, frozen, or the cold. I like the cold because uh, it's more of just like a like a, a beverage with like a sweet uh, filling on top. It almost reminds me. That's why you get the iced coffee because that's what it feels like. Frozen. It's just it melts too quickly and it's not my thing. But we are here at the Hogshead Pub because we're gonna grab a quick beer uh, and a quick uh, quick beverage before we hop on the Hogwarts Express to um, uh, over to Diagon Alley. We're gonna do our first park hop. I got the fire whiskey with us. Uh, Obviously not as is, because you can just take a shot, but uh, I decided to get an actual beverage. And typically what they do is they mix it with Strongbow Cider. So uh, fire whiskey is basically cinnamon whiskey or fireball, if that's what you're familiar with. Uh, that's why they call it fire whiskey. And it's just uh, in some hard cider. What did you get? I got the Long Island iced tea with raspberry. And if you guys don't know this about me, I did not know what this was. Uh, the first time I came to Universal, no, I No, you didn't asked, know what a Long Island was. Yeah, at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I came to Universal and I was like, can I have something a little sweet? And they gave me this and I was astounded. I loved it. And then Quincy explained to me what it was and I was shocked. So. <laughs> um, uh, I will say that the Strongbow and the Fire Whiskey, it's a great just lighter beverage to start your day. I don't, that, I don't do beer. Uh, typically, and beer weighs me down, but a cider is much lighter, and the cinnamon whiskey, it just adds a little bit of um, zing to it, as well as it's a little stronger, which that's what I appreciate on my perfect day. There you go. This one is nice and sweet and light. Um, I'm going to sip on it for a long time because it is stronger, but it's, if you're looking for something sweet and you don't really love the taste of alcohol, I think that this actually is more reminiscent of a sweet tea, even though there's no tea in it, which I learned the hard way. She says... I'm gonna sip on it for a long time, immediately chugs it. And this just in a little, maybe 10 minutes ago. Uh, it's currently 12.30, so maybe 12.15. Hagrid's finally opened. So I'm really glad we did not stay in that line. We, we would have wasted half the day, especially because the park is only open until seven o'clock. Uh, but right away with uh, how long the line was backed up until, it's already 80 minutes and it's only been open for 10 to 15 minutes. So glad we, glad we skipped that. Glad we found you instead. We're, <laughs> yeah! Now the reason we got our drinks before we got uh, on Hogwarts Express is because you can actually bring your drinks, one, in the, in the, in the line, but also on the train. Oh my. Remember, in or the only way you can ride Hogwarts Express, because it does take you to Universal Orlando, that's where Diagon Alley is, you have to have a park hopper pass. which is in Universal. Well, London. London. London, if you will. We haven't quite made the trek over into Diagon Alley. What do you guys want to do? Uh, get lunch? Yeah. Definitely time to eat. Let's do it. You want to do Men in Black before lunch? I guess that makes the most sense. Walking right past it. All right. We're going we're gonna to do Men in Black. Men in Black is a shooting style game where you are shooting aliens who are training to become the next... Uh, what, what do they call them? I guess the next Men in Black. Uh, there's a single rider line 
Uh, so I think we're gonna opt for that today because the standby line is about 25 minutes. So we're gonna rock for the single red line. We are gonna have to get some lockers on the way, but let's see who can get the highest score. Again, we can't film on the ride, but the, uh, and the winner is, drum roll please. Fry bucket, good job. Well, <laughs> you tripped her because she won? Well, Emma, don't be a sore loser. I'm normally better at shooting games. We've made it to Simpsons land. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna pass the actual Simpsons ride, which is currently 35 minutes. Also, because it makes Emma extremely sick. Does it make you sick too? Yeah, Fry Bucket also extremely sick. Uh, it's a motion simulator attraction, which is. Um, I actually don't mind it. It's a lot of fun. Um, but we're actually going to have lunch here in Simpsons Land because. Here in Springfield, I suppose, because uh, this is actually an a la carte situation. Uh, you can actually walk in here, and there are a couple different. Uh, we, we can we can all choose something for ourselves. There's uh, Cletus's Chicken Shack. There's the Krusty Burger. There's a bunch of different uh, food genres all in one building. So we're all kind of feeling something different. So I don't know. I don't know where we're gonna lean today, but uh, this is a great option if you and your family have different needs and different wants, especially for lunchtime. Part of my perfect day is us all eating on one side of the table and not the other one. Oh, because asks, of friendship. Fair. Who wants to try their food first? I got the grilled to be grilled chicken sandwich. Okay. What do you get? Uh, me? Yeah. Oh, I got the basket of shrimp. And I got the chicken and waffle sandwich. And they all come with tater tots. Uh, and they're not potato barrels. They are, they are tater tots. Girl, they are... They're, they're thick. They're so good. And there's onions in them. I think they're a little bit better than your average tater tots. Yep. My sandwich, I actually really like it. The bread is super soft. The chicken is nice and peppery. It's a little bit on the dry side. But I think for a healthier but filling option, I think it's a good one. Yep. Mm. And I got the basket of shrimp. One, two, three, four, five pieces of shrimp in here with tater tots. Also, they gave me one hush puppy. <laughs> just one. Right. I would have loved a little more than that, but hey. they really said just quiet puppy. It's not heavy. And that's really nice and flaky. You can really taste that coconut flavor in that. I like that by itself. I don't need sauce, yeah. but I got tartar sauce with it. That's really good. I'm very impressed. Now this comes uh, on recommendation from our girl Emma. Uh, this is the chicken and waffle sandwich. Uh, it does come with uh, tomato, lettuce, and mayo syrup. It's not just mayo, it's not just syrup, it's a mayo syrup. I opted mine for no tomato because I'm not a huge fan of tomato. So it definitely is a, is a solid mix of savory and sweet. The chicken is actually pretty juicy, has a nice crunch, but the, uh, I'm not gonna lie, the mayo syrup is throwing me off a little bit. It almost feels like mayonnaise that was like stirred together with sugar and then watered down is what it is what it tastes like. Which is not bad, but it just it's messing with my senses. Um, I think this is I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna eat it. Is it something that I would recommend? Like absolutely get this again? Probably not, but I'm gonna go in on some uh, on some I'll take the honesty. After some well-deserved lunch, I think it's important to do something that's important to me. Live entertainment. Yes. Which is very important. Which is very important. Uh, and actually, this is actually on all three of our must-do lists. It is. And it is Jason Bourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to go see the Jason, Sport, the Jason Bourne stunt show. Always a must-do for us. Between the technology and the live performance, the it's actors... It's, it's just neat! It is! <laughs> they do a really good job at combining all of those mediums into one big stunt spectacular. I always think it's a really good idea, especially after you've eaten a large meal, and it's in the middle of the day, which is when the rides are going to be the most, the highest wait time, to ride a show, do a meet and greet, do, do something more live entertainment because... Uh, did I say ride a show? You said ride a show. <laughs> See a show, do a meet and greet. Any of the, the things that don't take a lot of effort for you and that's not going to make you too queasy. We know it, guys, we have 30 minutes until the show. Oh. Uh, I don't think so. It typically doesn't. Uh, we should, uh, we always recommend getting to the theater at least 15 to 30 minutes beforehand. Uh, it's not as um, a dire need as it typically is for the Disney shows, all getting there at least 30 minutes, 30 minutes beforehand. Typically, the Bourne Suntacular does not fill up uh, as quickly as like very large theater. 
It's a very large theater. So, what do you want to do for 15 minutes? Let's shop around. Universe. Quincy's not here. But Quincy's not here. Ends. Like, you know, let's, let's, let's go shop around for a moment. So one of our favorite shops, and when I say our, I mean our, but mostly Quincy's, this is Universe, which is uh, Universal's uh, big, I would say, uh, front of the park shop. Every theme park typically has one. Uh, you know, Main Street has, you know, the, uh, the Emporium, uh, you know, Universal has Universe. This is where you're going to find all of your Universal-centric items, like, uh, or IP items. Like some monsters, some Felix that... Uh, I think it's the weirdest character. They're trying to Oswald him, um, but it's not working. But the merch is really good. That's Minion Duck. You've never seen Minion Duck? You've never seen Minion Duck? Wow, I'm getting like... Can I tell you something that always bumps me out? Okay. Come here. <clears throat> they oh. never have my name. I bet they don't have fries either. <laughs> Well, I think they do, but not, not the one that we know. Hey, oh, literally uh, have your name. <laughs> classy lady. All right, we made it. Three o'clock. Jason Bourne. It's really good. Now the Bourne Stuntacular is is a full theatrical experience. It's a lot of fun, but there are loud noises, there are special effects, there's violence, because if you've ever seen the Jason Bourne franchise, violence! Conflict! conflict because story, stories don't exist without conflict, right ladies? Right. <laughs> so, if you, <laughs> so if you've ever seen the Jason Bourne franchise, obviously it's about this guy who wakes up uh, and <clears throat> he can't remember who he is. All he knows is that he has uh, unique abilities, uh, which are like fighting people and knows what to do with a weapon, all those, all those crazy things. So this is basically about Jason Bourne and uh, the, the, an agency trying to get him. It's a lot of fun. Let's watch. Emma, what's your favorite part about the Jason Bourne stunt show? Um, I love when the fire goes off because it's really warm. Yes. <laughs> I get cold in the theater. There is fire in the show. It's important it's to know. It's very cool. And water. Uh, and Fry, water. What's your favorite part? Um, honestly, when he's, do, he's, he's hanging onto the helicopter. Yeah, he does that hang onto the thing. helicopter. That's pretty cool. My favorite part, uh, I love just how everything comes together. Uh, so I love the storytelling of Jason Bourne, how uh, the director and there's the, 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 the main villain and how they're on screen because they're filming somewhere backstage and they're coming on stage. I think it's really cool how they connected everything. So I like the connection. Um, here we go. It's of course, y'all already know? Villain, villain con minion blast. My home away from home. Amen. Ten minutes. Let's go. This is my first time. It's your first but time? I've never done it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. There are two ways to play this game. One is just for fun, but two, you can actually keep uh, track of how many times you play, what your overall score is, and uh, even earn new um, like uh, <clears throat> earn new medals and tasks depending on uh, how many points you got that time, how many points you got overall. All you have to do is sign on to the app, right there, play. If it's your first time, you're going to have to choose a username and log on, do all the kind of stuff. You're going to pair with one of the uh, blasters and you're going to uh, have you blasting. Once everything is said and done, don't forget to check your stats on your phone or you can check it up here as well and see if you made the cut of uh, the top 30 villains. We obviously did not, uh, but overall today I was number 42. I think I'm in the 60s. No, no, 49. Right there I am. Yeah. 49. Killing it. Good job. Proud of you. Drake. How'd you do? Uh, 573,000. 573. Oh yeah, 800. Okay. Nice. Good job. Does that mean I can get a treat? You want a treat? I want a banana. Oh, all right. Go for it. Now for Fry's little treat, we've come over to formerly known as Freeze Ray Pops, but what I like to call Papanana. 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 I make them all say it and I refuse to call this Freeze Ray Pops. This is where you're going to find a lot of popsicles really, but they have three really fun themed ones and then lots of flavors. What are you going for? I think I'm going to get 
Minion. Minion is my favorite. My biggest recommendation. It's blue banana. Gru is Nutella, and Victor is orange cream with lots of fun flavors like mango, cotton candy, strawberry, and more. Let's check him out. Oh my gosh, he's Don't lovely. My of course. All right. Okay. Emma, the hype is real. Yeah. Really? I, I really like this. It's so good, it's very right? Good. It's weird because it's not weird because it's banana, but you wouldn't. It's think just of different. A banana flavor for like. Um, a blue yeah. banana flavor. Blue I banana. It's really good. It's so good, and I'm normally not a banana flavored person, but I, I love it. I do like banana flavored things, but I like this. This is my new favorite. Ah, thank you. Your yes. All right. So Fry got her little dessert, mm -hmm. and I think now, perfect day, sir. Where are we headed? Uh, I think we've. We've written some rides, we've seen some shows. I think we're going to do more of that, but I think it's now time to visit one of my favorite uh, mid-date places to get a nice cocktail, uh, and it's Finnegan's. Woo, Finnegan's! Yay! Finnegan's Bar and Grill is an Irish pub. It's also a, a, a table service that you can uh, eat, you know, your bangers and mash, your Irish food. Uh, <laughs> but it, it is a walk-up bar um, where you can grab... Hi! We can we can grab beverages to go, and right now because it's not super busy, it's also not uh, like Halloween Hornets or anything like that. They uh, also do have some seats, so if you want to pull up a seat to the bar, there's some light seating in this general area. Not a crazy amount of seats, uh, but uh, all of these bar areas they're all available for you to sit, as well as some couches over here there that people are kind of like I don't know relaxing upon. Uh, but uh, it's a great spot, and uh, I can't recommend it enough. This is always where I get my drinks to go to walk around the rest of Universal with. Drinks acquired, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked to hear what I got. Absolutely just mind blown. I got a Manhattan. Uh, what? Uh, like I said, they, you, they will make literally, as long as they know how to make it, or you can tell them uh, how to make it, it's a full bar that will make whatever you want. So I got a Manhattan just to, because typically their bartenders are pretty solid here. Emma, what'd you get? Uh, dirty martini, because Quincy taught me to like dirty martinis. And Fry, what's in your drink? I got a fruity little beverage. It's orange juice, cranberry juice, peach schnapps, and vodka. So, yay! You know what that is. Cheers! Cheers friends. Perfect day! Perfect day! Okay, we are headed to one of my favorite attractions of all time. Uh, it's it's definitely a little silly because it's a dark ride, but I love this attraction. It's so nostalgic, especially because of the of the smell that everybody talks about. We're gonna go to ET. So E.T. is a dark ride that takes you through a retelling of the movie E.T. You board a bike, uh, it's like a big bike uh, um, ride vehicle, there are multiple bikes, it's like four bikes per ride. Uh, per ride vehicle and you fly above uh, the city and you actually it's an extension of the movie where you actually ta uh, sending E.T. back to uh, his home planet. What's super unique about this attraction is that you can actually uh, put in your uh, name at the beginning of the attraction and uh, at the very end of the ride, E.T. will call it out, uh, Sage or, or Emma, whatever. Uh, but really, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's super nostalgic. It's been around for a long time. Uh, Steven Spielberg has such a connection with this ride. He's like, the only way you can have Jurassic Park and do different things with Jurassic Park is that if you keep E.T. here. Steven Spielberg is the reason E.T. is still here and not closed down because it is definitely an older attraction. Been here a long time. We have made it to uh, one of my other favorite shows, Universal Orlando's Horror Makeup Show. The last show is at 5.15. This is awesome, we just made it. The doors are open. We can't film inside, but we'll talk all about it when we're done. Ah! <laughs> Horror. Makeup. Wow. I'm well, not gonna lie. To the show, baby. That got me. <laughs> um, the horror, <laughs> the horror makeup realize. show is a twenty is about a twenty minute uh, comedy show that's also that also teaches you about uh, horror makeup, whether it be um, physical or CGI or uh, prosthetics, all those kind of things. Uh, it's very interactive. They bring up uh, they bring up a couple of guests. Um, it's clearly 
told by two comedians who aren't actually makeup artists or hosts. They're definitely comedians. It's a lot of fun. After a successful bathroom break, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, horror makeup uh, show, we are headed to the Mummy. We're probably gonna do, we don't have that much time left because the park does close at seven o'clock today. So, but we do, uh, it looks like the lines are pretty short. We're gonna try and hit up the Mummy and make our way into Diagon Alley for the very first time. But also, Fry has never been here for Mardi Gras. So we're gonna definitely gonna give her her Mardi Gras moment here at Universal. That's a big part of uh, Universal this time of year is uh, enjoying Mardi Gras, uh, seeing the floats, and you know, uh, enjoying the really interesting food. For our next attraction of the day, we are headed to Revenge of the Mummy, one of my personal favorites in Universal. It's an indoor roller coaster themed to the movie of the mummies. Brendan Fraser's there, um, but then you find out that it's not, it's not just a movie. It, the curse is very real. It gets crazy. You may or may not go backwards. Luckily, there's an awesome single rider line, and we're gonna utilize it. But there are lockers here, because this is another one you're gonna have to stop by the lockers. So head in here to the left, and then we're gonna hop in the single rider line. All right, so we are grabbing a few things from a Mardi Gras booth, because this little girl has never done Mardi Gras. And we did not think it was fair that she wouldn't get to do any of it. So we have a few beads. Yep. We grabbed the Sangria Flight from the Spain booth, as well as the Papitas Gravas, which Sage is grabbing right now. If you want to see the full coverage, though, of our Mardi Gras video, oh, it's up on the channel right now. We had a good time. We had a really good time. Unfortunately, Miss Boquita was not with us, so we're going to give her a because small she moment. she lives in Texas. She does live in Texas. So we are going to give her a small Mardi Gras small moment taste. right now. Alrighty. Seasons crispy potatoes and a paprika aioli. Miss Bucket, tell us what you think. Okay, let me get a good bite. Oh, dang. That's really good. The aioli is awesome. Uh-huh. There's a lot of paprika on here. Super smoky flavor, mm -hmm. I think. And the potatoes are not as crispy as I would like, but they're like good potatoes you would have at school. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, in the cafeteria. Yes, um, really, really nice. Complex flavors, actually. I really enjoy this. I need this right now because Sage has ideas for how the rest of the evening is gonna go. So Do I? I needed a starch. Honestly, this, this is a really good time to have the safety talk because we have uh, had, what, two drinks? Uh, and we are eating as well, so here are the def we do this for Disney as well, if we're drinking around the world or whatever. Here's what's super important to know if you are drinking at a theme park. Safety talk! Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Was that not the right intro? I liked or? It. Okay. Uh, rule number one, if you are drinking, make sure you're also uh, drinking water. Uh, you go back and forth with every drink that you have, definitely have a glass of water. Hydrate, it's important because the more sun that hits you, the more the alcohol hits you, and you've gotta offset that alcohol. Number two on our safety talk is remember to always have snacks as you're drinking. We're having snacks and big meals throughout the day so that way nothing ever gets too much to us and it's just a healthy balance to have a snack and a drink. And then number three... Is to never ever drive. Uh, all three of us were actually not driving today. We all Ubered here, which is super important. So make sure if you are drinking and, or you're planning on drinking all day and uh, enjoying yourself at City Walk because we, we are going to have an after party, make sure you are finding a safe way to get home. And number four, remember at the end of the day, it is still a, a theme, theme park. park. Be respectful. Uh, everyone, everyone is just trying to enjoy themselves. This is a family, technically a family theme park. Yes. So uh, be respectful. <laughs> Don't be a fool. No. Don't get kicked out. You have fun, but let other people have fun too. Safety talk. <laughs> We have to go. We have to go. We've got to get to City Walk. I think we've done all we can do here. Because it's time for the official after party for my perfect day. We made it. What a great day we had at the park. Both Island of Adventure and Universal Studios. Now, I didn't do everything I absolutely wanted to just because it was so busy. You can probably do that and more if you do splurge for the Universal Express Pass. But remember, it is very expensive. It's way more expensive than attempting Genie Plus. We, uh, overall, we really had a great day. Specifically, why? Because it was Sage's perfect day. No, because we were together. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For our official dinner tonight, we are here at Antihitos. We are going to be popping in at the bar where you can grab the full menu without having to wait. We're pretty excited about this one. Um, it's colorful character, vibrant cuisine, and I think that that is just kind of representative of our whole day. Colorful, vibrant, and lots of fun. So good times, good Mexican food, and I'm gonna go find our friends here at the, the bar seating. 
rapid fire. Our food has arrived. I ended up going with the taco salad. It's ground beef, black beans, roasted corn, tomato salsa, guacamole. It does come with sour cream, but I did ask for it without. Shredded cheese, tortilla chips, and a pineapple avocado dressing. Right, bouquets. I got the nachos, which is crispy tortilla chips, queso, black beans, shredded cheese, tomato salsa, sour cream, guacamole, and your choice of chicken or beef, and I went with beef. I don't know if that's a popular choice, but I like I beef. I think it probably is. Okay. Then I want the shrimp tostada, which is citrus and ancho marinated shrimp, avocado, cilantro, coleslaw, tomato salsa, pickled red onions, and queso fresco. I opted for uh, to remove the uh, avocado because I am not a big fan of avocado, and if I'm gonna enjoy my tostada, I'm gonna do it my way because it is my perfect day. I'll say right off the bat, I was hoping for like ground beef, which is weird for nachos, but it's not. It's shredded beef. Shredded beef. Look at that shredded. Yeah. So just you should know. But honestly, <laughs> really good nachos. I'm kind of in the mood right now where I knew nachos were gonna hit the spot. So I really wanted this. The queso is really nice. There's a little bit of everything. Um, gotta get it all on the ship. But this is really, really nice. It's a big portion, so I will be taking a box to go, most likely, or they will help me eat it. But, very good choice. I am very pleased. Would get this again. Taco salad, it's very simple. Tons and tons of stuff on top. They did not hold back when it comes to the beef and cheese in particular. Really nice, light and crispy, but super flavorful. Uh, for me, I think it's actually on the sweeter side because of that pineapple dressing, but really nice. I love this. I will devour the whole thing. And if you're looking for a healthy option that is tasty, I think this is going to be closer to that category. It might not be the healthiest salad you ever have, but very tasty. It's messier than a typical tostada because most tostadas that I've had in the past at, at restaurants are served on a soft shell, and on a hard shell, it's it's more of an open-faced tostada. Uh, the shrimp and a big gripe of mine. Can I be honest? I have a huge gripe about this. Leaving the tails on. Leaving the tails. It is a good tostada, it's, but it's messy. It is messy, and the tails are still on the shrimp. So that's my big right. Other than that, it's pretty solid. Overall thoughts about Antojitos, go. Really good, really liked it. Not the most ex outstanding Mexican you'll ever have, but sure. I really liked it. Yeah. Basic Tex-Mex, um, the Texan approves, so it's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. And yeah. I like that we sat at the bar and got to order off the whole menu. Yep. And did not have to wait that long. Yes, that's always super important. Uh, there are different restaurants all around uh, City Walk that you can do that at. Cowfish, there's a great bar in the back. Uh, if you go upstairs, uh, up the escalator, there's a great bar in the back that, uh, that serves the whole menu. If you're interested in that, there are different. Uh, uh, Margaritaville, same kind of situation. Uh, you can go up to the bar full service. That is pretty normal here at City Walk, but overall, Antonito's uh, consistent Mexican food. Lots of sour cream, but so, so much. much. Sour cream. But consistent. We've got two more stops before my perfect day is over. All right. Uh, s s stop second to last. There you go. I was like, what? What is the word? Second to Next last. Next to last. Next to last. Now I was thinking we could either do Rising Star, which is, uh, oh, wait. So are you saying we should do karaoke? No, listen, the karaoke that he has picked. I think would be good. So Rising Star is karaoke with a live band, backup singers, and a host. I think it'd be really, really interesting, you guys. If we did that, I am now part of Team Anxiety. Don't you guys just, don't you guys just want to stand there and hear me sing? Hear you sing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you yes, guys, do. no, you're very nice. No, wait, hold on, come back. Uh, so instead, we're gonna do my other favorite thing, which uh, I call. 
bad luck putt putt. But before we do that, we're gonna go to the place that I always get a drink before we do Halloween Horror Nights, before we do Mardi Gras, and that would be Fat Tuesdays. All right, so here's all of our good, delicious drinks. Right here on the right, oh, there's a light that's really horribly ugly. Right here on the right is my drink. I grabbed the a mix of the mango and the strawberry. Here in the middle is Sage's, right? Yep, I got the uh, 44 Magnum, which is actually a combination of Cat 5 Hurricane and 190 Octane, which is a combi which is basically fruit punch, with uh, uh, like mixed up with orange. And also, uh, both Fry and I both got a floater, which comes in, in a little vial, and you have to uh, you can get either tequila, rum, or Everclear, because I was trying to uh, avoid mixing as much as possible. I went with the most insane choice I possibly could have. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, and they said Everclear was the best option, which is basically grain alcohol. Dear, help me. So yeah, have fun with that. And then I, this light is terrible, but I went with a mixture of pina colada and peach bellini. And I also went with a floater with a little bit more rum, just to have some fun. Woo! It is good. It is tart. You can taste the alcohol before the shot is even in there. It is um, a pretty strong beverage for a frozen cocktail. And that's what makes Fat Tuesdays so popular, um, especially during Mardi Gras and throughout the year. That's why it's a great, uh, honestly, it's, it's just a great frozen cocktail chain because it's not it's not just going to be juice and uh, sugar. It, it's it, it does actually contain the essence of cocktail, if you will. Uh, but this is um, a mixture of fruit punch and orange. It's really good. It's very strong. 190 octane and Cat 5 Hurricane are the strongest. This is a mixture of both of them. That's why they call it a 44 Magnum. That's great. That's crazy. Mine actually, I do think is a little bit sugary sweet, but I say that in the highest praise. Mm. I got the mango and strawberry, and I think it's the perfect combo. Beachy, fruity, um, and I think you can taste alcohol, but it's not overwhelming in the sense that if you don't like that flavoring, it's not gonna deter you from enjoying it. Mine, I agree with both of them. Mine also leans more on the sugary sweet side. I'm tasting more of the peach bellini than the pina colada, but I think that's just because that's where my straw has ended up. But it's very good. It's very cold. It, it hurts my teeth, but in a good way. Goyles, I have just led us to the most cursed universal attraction in the history of ever. Cursed? Yep. In the history of ever? Yep. This is... Hollywood Drive-In Golf. Now, I call this bad luck putt-putt. Hollywood Drive-In Putt-Putt Golf is at the very exit of City Walk, which means it's at the exit of Universal Orlando Resort. Now, what that means, it's the last thing that people might want to do on their way out of Orlando, uh, Universal Orlando Resort. So that means uh, you have a bunch of intoxicated adults. Where might they come? Hot pot. Yes, you have a bunch of four-year-olds that you spend all day with from sun up until sundown, and they're just it's crying because they have to go home. And then they see hot pot right at the exit of Universal. You know what they're gonna do? Hot pot. So, <laughs> so I I'll be honest. I've done this five times, okay. and every time someone has gone home in tears. Whether it be an adult, an intoxicated adult, uh, a child, I'll be honest, one of those times, it was me. Yes, yes, that is why this will forever be known as Bad Luck Putt Putt. We're breaking tradition. Let's play. Guys, this is huge. This is the first time in, in, in since 2012 that no one has left with me 
and tears. Well, we've not set the scores yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Fry, you've been the scorekeeper all night. What were the scores? So, in last place, with a score of 50, is me. Whoa! So I'm probably gonna be the one that's crying. No! Okay. I actually thought my score was 100. <laughs> well, your score is one point less than mine at 49. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'll take so, it. What? So that means Sage won with a score Yay! of 43. Oh, that means just my, it really is my perfect day. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me for my perfect day. I wouldn't have wanted to have it any other way. Uh, it was so much fun celebrating with all my friends, Universal um, Orlando Resort. We rode some rides at IOA, uh, and we saw some shows, Universal. We had some drinks along the way. Overall, I couldn't have asked for anything more. In fact, if you want to follow along with my perfect day, make sure to scan the QR code. Uh, now, it, a lot of what's on there is what happened today, but if you want to follow along, you can do that if I scan the QR code. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch my perfect day over in Hollywood Studios. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye. One day I'll win a perfect day. You got this, babe. You got this. <laughs>